a life cut short, the preventable death of Champ. Champ, as he was known to his friends and family, was more than just an inmate. He was a father, a son, and a friend. He was a man who made mistakes, yes, but he was also a man who deserved a chance at redemption. That chance was cruelly snatched away from him on a cold, unforgiving night within the walls of a prison that was supposed to rehabilitate, not kill. Champ was brutally murdered by another inmate, a known threat to him, a predator the system knew about and chose to ignore. This wasn't an act of God, a random act of violence. This was murder, plain and simple. A death that could have been prevented, a life that should not have been lost. The system, riddled with negligence and apathy, failed Champ in the most horrific way imaginable. It failed to protect him, it failed to separate him from his known enemy, and ultimately it failed to keep him alive. This essay will explore the administrative failures, the human negligence and the systemic rot that led to the preventable death of Champ. It is a call for justice, for accountability and for a complete overhaul of a system that has proven itself to be broken, dangerous and tragically indifferent to human life. The story of Champ is not an isolated incident. It is a tragic reflection of a larger crisis within our prison system. It is a system that often prioritises punishment over rehabilitation, a system that dehumanises those within its walls and a system that turns a blind eye to the safety and well-being of those it is meant to hold. Champ became another statistic, another name on a long list of preventable deaths within prison walls. Administrative failures, a cascade of negligence. Champ's death was not the result of a single error, a solitary lapse in judgment. It was the culmination of a series of administrative failures a cascade of negligence that ultimately led to his demise. It began with the prison's failure to heed the warnings embedded within their own system, a system designed to prevent exactly this kind of tragedy. The prison had in place a separation alert system, a digital safeguard meant to flag inmates who posed a threat to one another. This system, designed to protect, failed in its most basic function. The separation alert, meant to be a flashing red light, a blaring siren was ignored, dismissed or perhaps never even seen. It was a critical line of defence, breached not by force but by indifference. This failure to act on the alert speaks volumes about the culture of negligence that permeated the prison walls. This wasn't just a technological failure, it was a failure of human responsibility, a failure to recognise the urgency, the very real danger that the alert represented. The responsibility for this failure falls squarely on the shoulders of the prison administration, those tasked with ensuring the safety and well-being of those within their care. Wardens Hill and Lynch, the two figures responsible for overseeing the prison's operations, failed in their duty to protect Champ. Their negligence, their failure to act directly contributed to his untimely death. Ignored warnings the separation alert system failure. The separation alert system, in theory, should have been Champ's lifeline, a digital shield protecting him from those who meant him harm. It was designed to flag potential conflicts, to alert the prison staff to inmates who posed a threat to one another. The system tragically did its job. It flagged Champ and his eventual murderer as a potential conflict, a powder keg waiting to explode. The alert, however, fell on deaf ears, ignored by those who should have been most vigilant, dismissed by those who held Champ's life in their hands. The reasons for this disregard are multifaceted, a web of systemic failures and human error. It could have been a lack of training, a failure to properly educate the staff on the importance of the alert system. It could have been a malfunctioning system, an alert lost in the digital ether, a glitch in the matrix of prison bureaucracy, or perhaps and this is the most damning possibility, it was simply ignored, brushed aside amidst the daily grind of prison life, another alert in a sea of digital noise. Whatever the reason, the outcome remains the same. A young man is dead, a life extinguished due to a failure to act, a failure to heed the warnings that were staring them in the face. The separation alert system meant to be a safety net became a cruel irony, a testament to the prison's disregard for the lives it held within its walls. Section 4. Warden Hill, A History of Negligence. 
Warden Hill, the figurehead of the institution, the man entrusted with the safety and well-being of the inmates, bears a heavy burden of responsibility for Champ's death. His tenure as warden was marked by a pattern of negligence, a disregard for safety protocols and a blatant disregard for the human lives under his watch. Prior to Champ's tragic death, there were numerous red flags, countless warning signs that painted a clear picture of Warden Hill's incompetence. Reports filed by correctional officers detailing understaffing, inadequate training and a culture of apathy were seemingly ignored by Warden Hill. Complaints from inmates about unsafe conditions, about threats to their safety, were met with indifference, dismissed as the ramblings of criminals looking for trouble. Warden Hill, it seems, had grown comfortable in his position, blinded by a sense of authority, deaf to the cries for help that echoed within the prison walls. His negligence was not just a matter of inaction, it was a conscious decision to prioritise budgetary concerns over the safety and well-being of the inmates. He cut corners, reduced staff and ignored the deteriorating conditions within the prison, all in the name of saving money, of maintaining the illusion of order. Warden Hill, in his pursuit of efficiency, forgot the human cost, the very real consequences of his actions, or rather his inactions. Section 5. Warden Lynch's silence, complicity in tragedy. While Warden Lynch's negligence set the stage for tragedy, Warden Lynch's silence made him complicit in Champ's death. As the sending institution, Warden Williams Lynch had a duty to speak out, to challenge the dangerous status quo to be a voice for the voiceless within the prison wall. Instead, he chose silence, opting to protect his career, his position, over the lives of the inmates he was tasked with protecting. Warden Hill was aware of the problems plaguing the prison. He knew about the understaffing, the lack of training, the disregard for safety protocols. He saw the reports, heard the complaints, witnessed firsthand the deteriorating conditions within the prison. Yet he remained silent, a willing participant in the culture of negligence that permeated the institution. He chose to be a bystander, a silent witness to the slow-motion train wreck that was Champ's impending death. His silence was not born of ignorance, but of fear. Fear of jeopardising his career, fear of angering his superior, fear of upsetting the delicate balance of power within the prison walls. He chose self-preservation over moral obligation, careerism, Pause 2S, Section 6, A New Dawn, Reforms and Hope. In the aftermath of Champ's tragic death, the cries for justice could no longer be ignored. The media coverage and public outcry forced the administration to face the consequences of their negligence. Reforms were set into motion to ensure such a preventable tragedy would never occur again. Pause 2S, a comprehensive oversight committee was established. This committee conducted thorough investigations, identifying areas of failure and recommending changes. Their findings revealed deep-rooted issues that had festered for years, but with transparency came the opportunity for transformation. Pause 2S. Mandatory training programmes for all prison staff were introduced. These programmes focused on safety protocols, crisis management and inmate welfare. Staff members were educated on their moral responsibility to protect those in their care. Regular audits ensured the training was a cornerstone of the institution's new ethos. Pause 2S. The separation alert system was completely overhauled. Advanced technology was implemented to create a foolproof system. Inmates were monitored with state-of-the-art equipment, ensuring any signs of distress were addressed. Pause 2S. A culture shift was encouraged within the prison walls. Whistleblower protections were strengthened, enabling staff to report issues without fear. Open communication channels were established, fostering an environment where concerns could be raised. The focus was on genuine improvement and accountability. Pause 2S. The impact of these reforms was profound. The prison began to transform into a place of rehabilitation and safety. Inmates received better care and incidents of violence and negligence decreased. The staff took pride in their roles as protectors and reformers. Pause 2S. The memory of Champ served as a catalyst for change. Through collective efforts, a new dawn emerged from the shadows of tragedy. The story of Champ became a testament to the power of accountability and hope for a better future. Pause 2S. As we reflect on Champ's legacy, 
we are reminded that every life within those walls matters. The changes implemented were promises to never forget, to always protect, and to strive for a system where every individual can find safety, dignity, and redemption. Pause 2 S. This is the story of a new beginning, where hope prevails over despair, and the lessons of the past pave the way for a brighter future. Let Champ's legacy inspire us to continue the fight for reform, to be vigilant, and to always choose compassion over complacency. Pause 2 S. Thank you for watching and let's continue to advocate for change, for justice and for the countless voices that deserve to be heard. Pause 2S. End of narration.